Hi, I'm Darian, the developer of The Land Forgotten. About a month ago, I released my first devlog. I couldn't have been happier with its reception. It even led to an article written about The Land Forgotten on stinkygames.com. Wow. Since then, I have mostly been focusing on the third chapter of the game, in which Quali goes to the Valley of Echoes and meets the magicians that live there. One of the series of puzzles in that chapter is based on Roman numerals, and the player needs to create an algorithm that adds two different numbers together. It has been one of the most difficult puzzles to design, and in this video, I'll show you why. Despite its complexity, this puzzle was one of the first ones I found for the game. In fact, at that point, there was no game, just an idea to make one with puzzles based on linguistic problems. I talked about the Linguistic Olympiad in my previous video, a competition where students translate words or phrases from an unknown language using some already translated material. I started my work on the land forgotten by looking at the older problems from the Moscow Linguistic Olympiad, and one caught my attention. It was more of a mathematical than a language problem. The task asked to write a set of rules using which one could add together any two numbers from 1 to 99 written in Roman numerals without converting them to a decimal system. So you could make rules that would switch one part with another, cross parts out, but all of them had to be such that someone could follow them without even knowing what Roman numerals were. I loved the idea of this problem. The fact that you can create an algorithm that would add together any two numbers sounded so cool. The problem starts with a reminder of what Roman numerals are. Numbers from 1 to 9 are written using i, v, and x. Decimals use x, l, and c. c is 100. Numbers from 11 to 99 are composed of the decimal part followed by a units part. For example, 42 is written as x, l, i, i, x, l, 4, 40, and i, i, 4, 2. If you're interested in solving the problem yourself, you can try it out now on a piece of paper. I have to be honest with you, I couldn't do it. I saw that there was a pattern to the numbers. I tried rules that would take parts of the numbers out, move them from one side to another, none of it worked. I then looked at the solution and it made me love the problem even more. The trick was to break the two numbers into smaller ones first, then merge and reorder them, and then convert them back into a larger one. Here's the instruction set provided by the author. First, make the following replacements in both of the numbers. Replacements can be done in any order. ix to v and 4 i's, iv to 4 i's, xc to l and 4 x's, xl to 4 x's. Then, put one number next to the other in a way where the same figures are grouped together and those groups follow the order CLXVI. The third step is to make replacements in a specified order. Replacements need to be done starting from the left side. Five I's turn into V, two V's turn into X, five X's turn into L, two L's turn into C. And the last step is to make replacements from the previous step, but in reverse, keeping the same order. The problem and its solution made me think of Zektronics games like TAS100 or Shinsen IO, where players solve the puzzles by turning a given input into the correct output. And so I started prototyping. Pretty early, I decided that having a player write a set of instructions for any two numbers between 1 and 100 from a get-go was too complex. I separated the puzzle into four parts, starting with the numbers between 1 and 5 and ending with the numbers between 1 and 100. For the UI, I added information about what the player needs to do and made a button for adding a rule to the instruction. The three possible rules were merge, for moving two numbers towards each other, convert, for changing the elements from one to another, and order, for having the elements go in the specific order. Pressing check solution showed what the numbers were at each step of the instructions. Playtesting the puzzle with different people revealed a few issues. Some were related to the user interface, which I knew was still a work in progress. Others were about the overall difficulty of the puzzle. The main problem, however, was that different people had a different degree of familiarity with the concept of Roman numerals. So how could I level the ground between the people who didn't even know what Roman numerals were and the ones who effortlessly solved the puzzle? Well, since the game doesn't reveal that its puzzles are based on real languages, there was no reason why I couldn't disguise Roman numerals as something else as well. 
the logic of the numbering system would remain the same, but the shapes could be completely different. That way, everyone would start from the same point of not knowing anything about the shapes or the numbers they represent. Now I had to design a series of puzzles to teach this system. I started with some simple ones early in the game. The story of the land forgotten revolves around the search for the mysterious race of the Sathrut, great masons whose technology can still be found in the depths of the mountains. So I used the idea of different stone combinations to unlock doors, chests, and ancient machinery. It allowed me to start the puzzle simple and increase their difficulty as the game progressed. Since I made it a predominant numbering system in the world of the game, I could use it in various places, such as page numbers and books, or combine it with other language puzzles. As a result, players had a very positive experience saying that they were getting an intuitive understanding of the numbering system. They were learning it without the feeling of doing tedious math exercises. The algorithm puzzle itself also needed adjustments. The different rules weren't very clear to the player, and the puzzle was just too difficult. The first thing I did was simplify the puzzle itself. The reorder rule was too confusing to the players, so I found a way the puzzle could be solved without it and removed it completely. I also saw that the difference between adding together any two numbers between 1 and 25 and any two numbers between 1 and 100 was really just the number of steps. So once the player figured out the earlier stage of the puzzle, the rest felt boring. To fix that, I removed the last stages of the puzzle and ended it on a part where the player needs to add together any two numbers between 1 and 25. With each one, I tried to let player figure out something interesting about the instruction creation and prepare them for the next puzzle. After many iterations and even more playtests, I got to a progression I'm quite happy with. In the game, these Roman numeral algorithm puzzles are presented as converter machines that allow player to change one type of stone to another. They're made by one of the magicians of Echoes. His dream is to build a machine that would add any two numbers together but he can't quite figure out how. Spoiler, we end up building that machine for him. There are still various things that are likely to change about these puzzles, but their core idea and mechanic work quite well. I'm glad to have shared the evolution of these puzzles with you. I omitted a lot of the in-between stages and didn't tell you about all the challenges I've encountered while working on them, but you should now have a good idea of how and why they changed over time. The Roman numeral based puzzles start in the first chapter of the game and continue into the second and third, which is the one I'm working on at the moment. Next month, I'm going to continue my work on the third level and I want to implement a series of puzzles based on the Malay language. Hope you enjoyed this devlog. See you in the next one.